All right, Monica. Monica, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Mandeville, Louisiana, and had a great childhood. Um, father had air conditioning business and mother ran it with him. So very quiet life, you know, nothing, nothing to say of it, you know, just lived a good life in, across the lake, skied in the lake, in the river. Uh, played golf, tennis, anything, you know. Rode horses all my life. Though. Sounds great. Yeah, I was a, a barrel rider. Seven years, uh, number one in state. So I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> and, um, you know, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. It's about me, what I want to achieve. I'm a goal writer, <laughs> you know. That's it, really. What did you want to do when you were a kid, when you grew up? I wanted to be an oceanographer, believe it or not. <laughs> But uh, I was very smart, graduated when I was 16, left my house at 16, and um, graduated college, 19, and uh, business and finance. Uh, was putting you gradu together. You graduated college at what age? 19. I was almost 20, yeah. Wow. Uh, I just, like, had a photographic memory. Don't anymore, but I did, you know. Uh, I started uh, taking over companies and restructuring them. Uh, with someone else who was a little older than me, but um, he had the money to do it. So that's what we did. And uh, then he started laundering money for the mob, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, I don't know if I can say that or not, but uh, he had 39 counts of bank fraud. I ended up marrying him. And uh, FBI came to my house and said, Miss Kirby, FBI, you either leave him or we're going to indict you too. So I left. <laughs> it was kind of crazy. I've lived many lives, you know. That was when I was young. But um, we traveled. I've traveled all over the place. And then started traveling out the country, I guess, when I was in my middle 20s. And uh, don't like to travel anymore. <laughs> it's just not that glamorous, you know. Do you have children? I have five children. I had, I have two, I have three baby daddy, if you want to say, uh, as they would say. But I had one child when I was 19. I was 20 when I had her. And then I had um, my son Christopher with the person I was talking about. And uh, then I had three with my husband. And he's been gone for 17 years. He was a monster. Um, two of my boys have passed away. And so I kind of lost it, you know. My, all my children I raised, though. And. How did you lose two of your sons? One of them was. Peter was 24 in Texas. He stole from the drug dealers. They killed him. And my son, my oldest son, was 30, and he was killed in a car accident. I'm sorry. So within a four or five year time. So it's been really, it's not fun. And then my husband molested both of his children, our children. So it's been a nightmare, you know. But... We get through it, you know, it's not ever going to go away, but you have to learn to make it every day the best that you can. And, you know, I cry every day. I just keep it to myself, you know. Uh, don't let anybody see that side of me. Uh, not that it's a weakness, but it's just private, you know. Nobody knows your pain. Um, what I've learned living here, I came over here because I was sick of living with these snotty people in Mandeville and Covington. They just nouveau rich. I mean, even the Silver Spoon ones, they, the entitlement is just so ridiculous. Nothing was ever given to me. I've made everything happen. I had a construction company, a mortgage company, a brokerage, a real estate company, and I commissioned off of every one of those, you know? So I look at every angle, try to make money. And then got out of that, went into insurance restoration, got out of that decided to be a nurse, became an RN with a bachelor's in science, and I studied to be, um, to do hospice work. That's what I wanted to do. 17 years hospice, and then opened a sitting service. So my clients were my hospice patients. So I did very well. My house is paid for, everything's paid for. Um, I do what I, drugs over here, I don't bring it home with me. Were drugs always a part of your life? or No, never. Exactly. Never, ever. I never did drugs in, at all until I got sick with the leukemia. The doctor gave me everything. And I said, oh, this feels good. 
takes away a little of the pain in the head and a little body pain. You were diagnosed just, with leukemia when? Uh, gosh, let's see. It's been since 15. Chronic myeloid leukemia is livable. It's almost like an immune system, you know, uh, breakdown. It's too many white blood cells uh, flood your body, blast you. Um, they thought I had mono at first. I used to run 10 miles a day, believe it or not, five in the morning, five at night. I'm crazy. It's either up here or down here. I don't know an in-between, you know? Like somebody else I know. Huh? Like somebody else I know. (laughs) Probably yourself, huh? That's right. Yeah, it's hard to, um, I'm a loner too. I don't, I don't understand people very well. Like I just, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. It's just that I can't, I don't have a job. I can't do this. I understand pain and I understand, but. I, I've learned this, what I, my pain is not their pain. And if you lost a child and I lost a child, you might be suffering a whole lot more than me because you don't know how to handle it. Different, I handle it differently. But I've learned to humble myself uh, living over here. I just left on a fluke. I just, one Saturday I left and never went back. And my son found out where I was and I've been here almost 10 years now. I go back and forth and everybody knows where I am now, but I just left because I had enough of everything. And I was, I started getting sick with headaches and seizures. And I have a, it's not a tumor, it's adhesions in my left uh, lobe um, caused from being hit by my husband with the back of a rifle. Hit me so hard over and over when I left him. That's the only thing I can think of that happened, so it causes me to have seizures. It's just sitting there, you know? Uh, Can't take it out, it's too dangerous. And my son says, you're already touched in the head, mom, so don't do it. So the drug you started after which event, or was it just a series of? Um, I guess I started heroin. I started doing, you know, prescription drugs, and I did those for like four years. This was all after maybe losing your sons? Uh, right after, uh, you no, know, uh, Katrina hit and my husband had died, but I had already left him. Just uh, the stress from Katrina, but I was in pain and stuff. So the doctor had prescribed all these. So I guess I started using prescription drugs in 2016. And then I started 2018. I started using heroin because. It was costing me when I ran out of my prescription. It was costing me like six and seven hundred dollars a day to feed my habit, because a thirty oxy is thirty dollars. Then you got to pay someone to go get it and all, and give them some. And you know, it's just outrageous. So that someone said heroin's cheaper. So that's how it started, snorting it. And then one time my dealer gave me black tar. I know I couldn't snort it. So of course I shot it, and I knew I would like it. You know, that's why I didn't want to do it. But uh, of course I liked it, and I've never been to rehab, and I'm not going to rehab. When I quit, I'm going to quit on my own. I'm strong enough to do that. You just got to go through the pain, you know? You're going to quit and get on methadone. Methadone's just as bad. Suboxone's just as bad. So then I'm addicted to that legally, you know? I, I think that people don't, I can't judge anybody, but I think that they use their weakness. People tend to keep they're weak, you know, I'm not going to be like that. I can't do it. I don't judge them, but whining and complaining is not going to get you anywhere. So I'm just a hard ass, I guess, you know, but I don't, um, someone asked me if I do heroin. Yes, I do. Well, well, you know, God doesn't like you to be a prostitute and do heroin and God doesn't judge me either. So, you know, don't talk to me about all that. You don't know my relationship with him. And that comes up often, you know, what are you doing out here? You don't look like you belong outside and doing this job. Everyone will ask me that. It's not your business, you know? But if you want to know, well, let's, let's sit down, you know? But it's, it's hard. Um, it's hard, I guess, it's hard as you make anything. I think that everybody does, has an addiction to something, whether it be shopping, sex, uh, drugs, but people, so just say people in Mandeville and St. Tammany, the rich people, they're really not rich. They just rich in their house, r- drive a nice car, but they can't afford any furniture, you know? And they have $20,000 uh, rental, you know, lease every month. 
I don't believe in that, you know. I'm just, I'm very tight with money. But not here. Whatever I make, I give away half my money. I have money in the bank across the lake, oh, anytime, but I don't take it out. It's just, I write down what I need and I get it. And I do it every day, you know. You're living where now? I live uh, in Mid-City and it's very humble. It's one room and uh, you don't even have a bathroom or a kitchen or nothing. You know, you have to go three doors down to the bathroom. But I don't, it really is like, I'm, my son came in and said, this is a dump, you know? It, it doesn't matter where, you know, I keep it clean, it's spotless. I painted the walls, the floor, everything. It gives me projects, you know? I'm always doing something. It's not, you have to be humble in your life. And it wasn't that I wasn't humble because I've had to work for everything. It was just that I took things for granted, like a washer and dryer, hot water, a bathroom a, to yourself, you know, a, a nice clean bed and clean clothes. Not always did you have that in the last 10 years, like when, since I've been here, you know? Sometimes you, and everywhere you go, you gotta pay, you know, pay the house and pay this and pay that. I never knew that. I didn't know, go to Walgreens and you have the deodorants locked up. The hell? <laughs> I never even heard of this. Were, stuff. were you happier when you lived your life where you were riding high and, and achieving a lot of things? I, of course, I loved. I love that. I mean, I loved to achieve, you know, and, and set my goals, and you know, yes. But I also like this better because I get to see that people. We're all human, you know, and we, we all got here from some way, you know. And people, I don't think I ever judged, like, why are they on the corner, you know, panning for money, and they have this big house. These people don't have that. They really can't get a job. They look at them. They're, you know, they live on the street. Do I think some of them choose to? Yes. You know, they could go home, but they don't want to, pride. You know, pride is an older man going to go home and live with who, their sister? They smoke crack, you know, <laughs> you know, it just, you don't really know where people come from and how they got where they get, you know, and where they are. And drug dealers, you can't really blame them. What the hell are they supposed to do? They've been taught that all their life. You know, their daddy sold drugs, their uncle sold drugs. How else are they going to live? And how else is going to go get a job at Home Depot and bring home, what, $200, $300 a week? They make that in a day. And the same here, you know, I average out about 850 a day and I don't work every day, you know, I'm going to top out at like 170 this year, you know, and I didn't work every day. So I've never really worked for anybody except hospice and I didn't go in half the time. But, you know, it's just, I don't know, but I see it's sad to see these girls all messed up, but they don't want help. You can't help them. I've tried that. You can't help them. So when I give money, don't, you don't owe me anything. Just go on. If you tell me, oh, yes, then you're going to owe me, and now I'm coming to look for you, <laughs> you know? But rule of thumb, you may love the streets. The streets don't love you. And uh, whatever you do, you're going to get caught. And so keep your nose clean. Keep to yourself. Stay in your lane. And that's how I've lived, and I have a lot of respect on the streets. But I promise you, if I fuck up, it's over. You know what I'm saying? They, I just got to keep Was it straight. Was it a difficult transition to go from the life you had to the life you have now? Um, no. I don't know, really, no. Um, I guess because, like, two of my best friends are of color, and um, they live kind of like the ghetto, you know? So I've been subjected to that. Plus, as a hospice nurse, I've been subjected to many things. You might see a beautiful million-dollar home, and you go in and it's hoarders. I've been in a house where it was gorgeous, all the grounds were immaculate, and go in, I'm sitting at the edge, typing on my computer, and something fell from the ceiling back to my throat, back of my uh, shirt, it was a mouse. I just got up and started screaming. You know, but what do you do? I can't leave. This lady's dying, I have to finish this, you know. But, and I've had fleas all over me before, and I stripped down outside, you know. Just, you can't, judge anybody and you can't you know these people that go in and say uh, i'm calling you know whoever they can't live like this well, where are they going to go you know that's what i'm so i don't like do 
good doers. You know what I'm saying? They, you come in from your lovely warm house and you come out here and say, I'm going to go call, you know, the authorities on them because they need help. They know how to get help. Just leave them alone. What you do is cause problems for them. You know, if they want help, they'll go get it. And it's just for the glory of their own, not for them, really. Just like money, you know. Why'd you give that person this money? You know they're using you because you wanted that money, not because I gave it. You know, it's just one thing I haven't been able to, to get is the thief thing. They steal from each other. Instead of uniting as one on the street, they steal from each other. So I've gotten stolen from a lot. Like I left my purse in my room at my own house, go to the bathroom, and my money's gone. Well, that's my own fault. Because they're going to come in your room. That's not, you know, they can do whatever the fuck they want, and they're going to do it. <laughs> so I've lost a lot of money not thinking like a thief, you know. And I've been put out of stores because they said I've stolen, but I've never stolen in my life ever. A pack of gum when I was young, <laughs> and I got beat for it. But I don't believe in that, you know. And I get everything I want, I ask for, and I manifest it, meditate on it, and it works for me, you know. Is this, are you in this situation because of your heroin addiction, or is it? I'm not in a situation. I go home any day. Oh, is that right? I'm in a situation of doing this to myself, you know? I can go home any day, and my house is just sitting there. On I live um, in Madisonville on the river. I have a beautiful home. It's not very big, but it's gorgeous. It's raised, and um, my son wants me to go home, but I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready. This is my family now. My family is here, and... My people are here, and I have people that I take care of here. It gives me purpose. I don't, I'm not going back to that, you know, living like that. If I go home, I'll probably be a recluse, you know, stay inside. Because I don't have the patience for ignorant people, you know, or entitlement. I've had to work hard for my stuff all my life. And I asked my father when he was dying, Daddy, why you never gave me any money when I asked for some? He said, why do you think? And I said, I don't know. He gave Robbie stuff, and he said, you're smart. He's stupid. <laughs> That's what he told me. So I guess, you know, he never wanted me to rely on anybody else but myself. And I did. But I've gotten myself in a lot of issues with my ex, my husband who's dead. He was a monster, you know. But we've gotten through it, you know, day by day. How do you compare the friends you have now to the friends you had when you were... They way. weren't no different. <laughs> They're really not my friends, you know. You really only have a handful of friends. And your closest friends you better watch, too, because they're usually the snake in the garden, you know. I don't trust, I trust very few. I think I have, like, maybe three people I trust. And uh, they're all males. <laughs> I don't, you know. People, and, I, and I'm not mad at anybody for what they do towards me because... I don't think it's really directed towards me. It's something with them, you know? Most people, if, if I start yelling at you and you haven't done anything, but you think it's you, it's not. It's, you know, it's usually my problem and I'm taking it out on you. Um, quit being so, you know, vain to think everybody's talking about you and, and, and wants to do something with you. You're not that, you know, you're not that important, you know? And that, I find that they're very immature. Uh, people on the street and around the people I'm with, everything, they always think something's wrong, you know, and they're very immature. And I guess that's because of how they grew up, you know, they're very street smart, but they're immature. Their maturity level, I would say, is like from 12 to 16, you know, and fighting is all they know. Knives, guns, you know, I carry a gun, I do. And I'll use it, too. I don't have a problem with it, and I know how. Um, but I don't tell anybody, you know. But they show their guns. Like, what are you doing? You know, it's just crazy. But, no, you have to have safety out here. You know, at nighttime, I don't go out. No, why would I? There's nothing but shootings around me, <laughs> you know. But I'm not scared. I'm not ever scared. I don't think I have any fear. The only fear I have is losing another child. That would be my biggest fear. Um, I'm not afraid to die. I had a great life, you know, and I accomplished 
everything except one thing. I'm, I'm going to get my doctrine in history. That's what I'm working towards this next fall. And I'm not far off. So I've, I'm going to write grants and do lectures. Do you see yourself getting clean from drugs one day? No. <laughs> no, I, I love heroin. I'm just not going to lie. Maybe. I can't answer that question. Uh, at this point, no. No, and I'm not going to rehab. I don't care. I'm not going. You can put me in jail before I go to rehab. I'm wasting their time. You, as a heroin addict, you could still um, achieve the way you did before? Well, I uh, was a hospice nurse and nobody knew for um, almost five years. And I, I shot up, but I only took my shot in the morning and then I would come home at lunch or I'd take it with me if I was far off, you know? And... Nobody knew. I shot between my toes. And I kept it hidden from everybody for a long time. Uh, I guess because I'm lucky that I make a lot of money and I'll have to steal, you know. If I wasn't making the money I did, I probably would have stolen, you know, from my family. And I've just been fortunate enough. I would hope that I wouldn't, but I probably would have. Yeah, you want your fix. You're sick, you know. But now the drug... It's not, I don't even test out with heroin or opiates. I test out with nothing. So what is it, you know? It's not synthetic, all the fentanyl, nothing's real. It's all synthetic. So do you think you're addicted to fentanyl now? Oh, absolutely. I've been addicted to fentanyl. I was addicted to fentanyl patches. That's what the doctor gives me. Not anymore. My doctor knows I do heroin. And uh, he doesn't like it. When you say heroin, you're, you're, it's really fentanyl you're... Uh, it used to be heroin. No, it's it's heroin and fentanyl mixed. But you can get it off the dark web. That's where they're getting it. You can buy anything off of there, anything you want, anything. And I don't understand it, but and that's what a lot of dealers do now. So I don't know. I don't know where I'll be next year. I don't know. I don't plan that day to day. Tell me about working as a prostitute. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Um, but I don't think about anything but the money and what I'm going to do with it and where it's going to go and if I'm going to spend it to get high or am I put it away, who I'm going to give it to, what I'm going to do. But you're um, resorting to that even though you have money stashed away somewhere? Mm -hmm. Just, to, just have, to compartmentalize your life? Yeah. I mean, I, I journal every day and write down everything I want and need. I have three lists. What I need, what I would like to have in my wish list, you know? And sometimes I get it all. I mean, I'm not, I don't do anything that's outrageous or ostentatious. I stay within my goal, but I do shoot for the stars as far as I can go with other things, with goals that are further, like a year plan. But I uh, do two-week goals. I do six-week goals, you know, monthly goals. I have, like, journals all over the place. I just pick up one and just start writing. Uh, it's, it's important to me to have all that. And I have, I've always been like that. I'm a, you know, I stay inside. I like to study, you know, about whatever it is. And I love history now. I'm very much into it. So, I don't know. What was, what was the lowest point of your life? Losing your sons? Yeah. Yeah. It's... You don't understand it. I did everything right. I don't understand it. You know, you never let your kids... I never had sitters for my kids. I never let them out of my sight. I played... I was a very hard mother. <laughs> my son said I was the Gestapo. Thank you. My son calls me Lady, my youngest son. And he said... Just listen to the lady and everything will be good on Friday, <laughs> you know. If they did what I asked, it was all, you know, they got what they were supposed to get in an allowance. I made my kids earn it. I taught my kids. I didn't give them a job unless I did it with them first. I didn't expect them to do anything on their own. Here, we're going to do this, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, now you can take it by yourself, you know. I was a fair mother, and my kids were my... Toy, my playmates. I played with them. We had a lot of fun. But 
come Sunday at six o'clock, it was over and we're back to the grind, you know? It just worked. I had five kids. I had a mother and father-in-law in my house and a drunk husband and a drug addict. And I had houses I was building. I was doing acquisitive prescription, fencing off land. I was finding land, a mortgage broker, uh, you know, pouring slabs. I didn't know what I was doing at first, you know, I had to learn all that. But it was just like thrown to me, thrown in my lap. My husband couldn't finish nothing. So, you know, of course, you know, I gave, uh, I had sex with everybody that I got money from, you know, of course, you know, but he was so jealous. But it was hard because he was so grandiose on everything. We had so many lots and it was like, what are you doing? Uh, we wanted to, I want to say small, not big. I know, you know, people don't understand. Big is not better. Small is great because you have smaller bills, less headaches, you know. Big house, you got to clean the whole damn thing. People don't use all that house. You know, that's just a show thing. I've never been like that. The only thing that I've ever wanted to show is like, love uh, is a BMW, like seven series. And I had, I had one, I just bought one six months before I started having seizures. And my son took it and <laughs> had to sell it because I can't drive anymore. And that's one of the reasons I came over here too. But yeah, my lowest point was my son, the first son, and the second son, I just like, I, I can't understand it at all. And, you know, where did I go wrong? And is it my fault? Would I do that my son has my karma? You know what I'm saying? You know, sins of the father. And it's just, I don't understand it. But I do know one thing. There is life. We drop our vessel and our bodies, and I believe our soul and our spirit is still here with us, you know. I, don't, I, see, I see dead people, <laughs> sorry. So um, I'm not crazy. I've been seeing them since I was a little girl. And I know there's life after death. And I know there's reincarnation, and I know we've been here together. I know I've met you before. It's not coincidence that people meet. You always meet people for a reason whether it's their reason or our reason. Um, I always think it's theirs, and so I'm usually mine, you know? Uh, I'm still learning unconditional love, obviously, and patience. How patient I was with my patience, wonderful. I have no patience whatsoever with nobody either. It's like, that's why I can't really be around a lot of people. I just don't understand, just do it, you know? Why do you want to lollygag around, just, just do the job, you know? But people aren't like me. You're an achiever. Yeah, I want to achieve this so I can go out and do something, you know. I don't want to be working all day. I want off at two, you know. So I believe getting up early and, and handling your business. You know, sometimes you have to work late. I'm a workaholic, though, anyway. I always have my hand in something. This isn't the only thing I do. I still re uh, go in and restructure businesses and reorganize people. That's what's wrong with most people is organization. You know, if you're looking for your keys for an hour, if you'd have just hung them on the door right where you're supposed to, you would have found them, you know, but now you're all upset and pissed off, you know? <laughs> you, you've been through so many ups and downs and lived so many different lifestyles. What, what have you learned about life that maybe most people don't understand? That life isn't guaranteed, nothing's guaranteed, and never is, forever is not a word that should be in the vocabulary. And Never also, I'll never do this. Like, you know, I don't believe in those things. I believe that, I wish that, what I've learned is not to look back and only look for today, not even look forward. And I can say that because I'm older, but you really have to, if you just do everything right that day, tomorrow will fall into place. So don't worry about it. Um, we make our own karma. And we have our karma from the past lives, I believe. You know, this is just my personal opinion, you know. And I think that not everybody is to know everything that we, all of us know. You know, you might know something more than me. And we do. I, I, uh, I definitely respect my elders because whether they are as dumb as a box of rocks or smart, they have something to teach me because they've lived longer than me here on this earth. So I think just live in day to day and be kind to others and don't be angry about anything really because 
if it's done, it's done. Just let it go, you know. And I just try to live my life happy, you know, and, and give to those. I don't care if they're drunk and they're going to go buy booze. I don't really care. Just, if I'm told, in, told to do that, I'm giving it to them, you know. Just follow what you feel in your heart, in your head. You know, what your consciousness is your guides, you know. So if you do that, you're not going to steer wrong, you know. But lessons are taught by, if we didn't do wrong, we wouldn't know right. If there was no bad, there wouldn't be good. So I thank God for everything I've been through. It made me a strong person. And I, I ask every day to bring forth those who I need to help. But sometimes I say, please, don't, please, just give me a break. And it's not happening, you know. I... Uh, Give, he uses my voice and tongue for messages to others. I never know when. I'm not a psychic or anything. I don't take any glory. It just happens. I'm going to be in the grocery store and say, oh, I have to, that's embarrassing. But always good comes out. If you have something bad that comes out of a reading, then they're not real. There's so many fakes. Um, I don't take any glory for any of that. But it's, it's hard life to live. I don't have spirits in their house all day, you know. If you had your life to live all over again, what would you have done differently? Never get married. I don't believe in it. <laughs> it isn't a white picket fence. And I don't believe that people are, I don't think we are able to be monogamous, you know. And it's okay. You know, I'm with, I have a boyfriend now. It took me 13 years to get one. And uh, I told him, you know, if you want something, just do it not in, around me, you know. I, and I say that, you know, of course it will hurt me. And, you know, if I find out, but don't let me find out. Or say, oh, you know, because people hate others to be happy. You know, why is it I, I, I'm with him now and he's with me and everybody's flocking towards us, like trying to fuck us up. It's crazy, you know, but people want what they see with us, because he's the only one I see in a room. You know, because people are, are drawn to that. But that isn't gonna be with you and him or me with someone else, you know? I'm not gonna be like that with anybody else. So I think that, I think just stay in your lane. And what I would, I, I wouldn't get married, no. But I'd have kids, I, I you know, they're, they're pain, but I still love my kids, you know? But I, I don't want to adopt any kids. <laughs> I don't want anybody else's problems. But yeah, I, I would do that, I guess. I, I had a great life. I, I mean, even though my husband was a monster, it was terrible. We laugh about it now. There's nothing to laugh about. It's the only thing we can do, me and my son. And he's a monster, <laughs> my son. He, he is straight out, tell you just how it is, you know. Sometimes it's, it's genetic. Huh? Sometimes it's, it's genetic. Yeah, he's my ditto. I saw him, he's like, we just, it's my twin, you know. But the personalities are different than the physical. He, oh, he's a monster. Like, he, he's just straight up, it's either black or white, you're on this side or that side, there is no in between. And, you know, one day I said, why are you such an ass? Like, I don't curse in front of him, but I said, you're being such an ass. And he said, eh, like that, no, no. I said, why are you being such a jerk? He goes, apple don't fall far from the tree. You taught me that. And, you know, I feel, I think if I do something, I wouldn't be so hard on my kids. You know, second place to me was a loser. If you didn't win first, second place, the fuck, I don't want that. So they made second place one time. And I said, oh, look, you second place. Loser. They threw it right in the trash. No, no, that's, you said it was a loser. So, you know, you have to be careful what you say. Do you believe in karma? Absolutely. Absolutely. And my karma's fast. Like, if I do something, if I think something wrong, I'm getting it right away. Yeah. I, I try not to do anything. I try not to be bad. I mean, my human side wants to, like, sometimes pull somebody's teeth out, you know, and just do some bad things to them. But I know that uh, quickly they will destroy themselves, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have a lot of attackers, like people really attack me a lot because I don't respond to things. Like I just, you know, walk away and that pisses people off, you know? And I don't, 
<laughs> give me some money, I'm not going to give you what, you know what I'm saying? Just there's certain things that people don't like. They want to bully me. I'm a white woman from Mandeville, uppity snob, you know. But they learned that I wasn't like that. You got to be careful who the quiet ones are, you you're, know. You're existing in a world, a subculture that's very rough. It's extremely rough, but I don't find it to be. Mm -mm. Not a cutthroat? No, like, I don't, but I don't put myself out there like that anymore. You know, I have certain people that I see at certain times, you know, that I want to, you know, say hello to and whatever, but I don't go out and mingle. I never have. I walk alone. I talk, you know, I'm just always by myself unless I'm with my man now. No, I don't do that. You know, I, I don't, I stay to myself. That's the best thing to do because people start too much trouble and you can get killed. Like they will kill you over something so stupid. I'm not going to be that person. I've never been hit, beat up or nothing like that. So I'm lucky. <laughs> what would you say is, is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Most important what? What is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Keep your mouth shut. I would say, you know, just one word could get someone hurt or start problems. Just keep your mouth shut. You don't know anything. You didn't see anything. And don't offer information. Just don't. If, you don't, if you're not involved in that conversation, don't say anything. And don't really conversate about anything, you know. Just keep to your, you know, conversate about good things. Really, it doesn't matter who it is. You can't trust many people, you know. And your closest people around you, like I said, are most, usually the snakes. <laughs> don't, and it's hard to live that way. But, yeah, that would be the most important thing. That and um, live every day happy. The best you could. That's it. All right, darling. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. I hope that helped you.